Greetings, YouTube. Fury Simulator here, taking a look at uh, the newest god, Alpwash, and uh, the way that I build him and uh, play him. So, first of all, starting with his build, uh, cooldown boots, and then Warlock Sash, uh, Book of Thoth, and then uh, Breastplate of Valor. Uh, his fifth item, I have Obsidian Shard here. This is what you're going to use if, uh, you know, there's some magic resist or whatever. Um, if you if you only the tank has magic resist, I wouldn't even worry about this. Uh, I would get Gem of Isolation instead. And then finish with Rod of Tehuti. Uh, I like Shield of the Underworld because um, he, he doesn't have any kind of escape mechanism. Uh, he's got a s couple of slows, but um, not, you know, 100% effective. So Shield of the Underworld is go good if you have to uh, box somebody. And obviously, you know, beads or whatever, situational. Um, I get really, really high mana on him. You can see I'm at like basically 3,200 mana. And that is because of how well it works with his passive hollow ground. Um, every, every, he can have six corpses out um, from his abilities. It's one in three. It lasts 45 seconds. Every time you walk over those, it uh, lowers the cooldown of his one and two by two seconds. Uh, restores six percent of his maximum health and three percent of his maximum mana so um, yeah so 3200 mana remember that uh, undead surge uh, he sends out these two corpses um, that they kind of run forward kind of like an isis spirit ball you can detonate those or have them kind of do their damage at any point or you can just let it run full distance it does not um, th th the thing that's different about isis in this is that here Regardless of, of where you, you do it, it doesn't the damage does not scale. So if you do it right in front of you, it's going to do the same damage as if you let it go full distance. Now, uh, I don't know if you noticed or not, but you see 5, 4, and then you... So like running over these corpses, um, pretty much just completely er eradicates the cooldown. Um, so, yeah. Anyhow. Um... <coughs> So like I said, that uh, this applies a 40% slow for three seconds. Um, you don't get uh, the two corpses till level four of the ability. So a lot of uh, what a lot of people do is is uh, prioritize their number one until they get to level four and then leave it at that because the damage between four and five is pretty insignificant. Um, but that second corpse makes a big difference um, with your explosion. Uh, me personally, um, so I will go like um, four. I'll prioritize, but I'll put one point each in um, Corpse Explosion and Fleeting Breath, and then leave those. So I'll go uh, get to four, one, and one, and then I'll, you know, obviously with uh, result whenever it comes up. And then um, I would, I'll leave, I leave number his number three until the the very last because the the damage scaling um, is pretty weak. You can see damage per tick uh, 32 at level one, 40 at uh, at level five. Um, so, y you know, you're not too much worried. This, the stun duration does not change uh, regardless of the level. So I just leave this at level, at, you know, as low as possible until as late as possible in the game. <coughs> uh, his number two, Corpse Explosion. You can uh, explode your corpses wherever. Uh, you can see here, they get to both of them. They have overlapping circles. You can also just do one if you like. And the reason you would do this maybe is if you, you're doing like a lane clear and all you have left is like the back row, you can you can just explode one corpse and then walk over the other to get some heal a heal if you need it and rest or you know restore some mana. So you don't always have to explode both corpses, so it can be overkill. <coughs> His number three, um, he throws that corpse, does some damage, uh, but it applies the dot. Uh, the dot doesn't do much damage, um, but. Um, what it does do is it uh, has a, uh, gives a one second stun at the end of it, after the last tick, um, and then uh, 0.5 seconds per heal that that player receives, with a maximum of three seconds. So, so anybody like uh, Chalk or Hercules who's receiving like a tick of a heal, um, it's really, really strong against them. Uh, you throw it on like a Hercules after he uh, he uses his number three or Chalk in his Rain Storm or anyone's got kind of like that that type of thing. Obviously, with any other healer, it's still going to work, but those guys, it's just absolutely <laughs> devastating on them. Um, and then his ultimate is uh, uh, the largest area effect in Smite, and you can see it's absolutely massive. And he sends out all these wraiths, and they have a ridiculous stacking slot, which is most likely going to be nerfed. Um, so like, the, the slow, oh, those guys are barely getting hit, um, 
The slow is 7% per stack, to 8 st uh, stacks maximum, so that's 56% slow. And you can see where I was talking about earlier with this uh, Obsidian Shard, if you don't need the pin, if you get Zim of Isolation, you're looking at like an 81% slow on people who are stuck in your alt. And given the size of it, if if they're um, kind of like in the middle of it, I, they just, I mean, they literally just cannot get out. I mean, they're going to go from 100 to 100% to dead, um, and they're going to be for it. And that's all right. Um, so anyhow, um, yeah, okay. So I think I covered all that stuff. Uh, as far as his abilities or his, his uh, combo, if you want to call it that, his there's two different ways to play him, and one is the three one two or one three two. Um, his three one two is a little bit stronger, just because of the. Um, it, it kind of gives you uh, more of a the, the slow effect after you've initiated combat, if you know what I mean. Um, so, I don't know if I, so if you can hit his three to begin with, then you're better off doing that. Um, because, like I said, the slow from your, your number one is going to be kind of uh, there for longer while you're continuing to fight, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. However, that's a little trickier. Because uh, it is a relatively small area, um, and it's much easier to hit the three if they're already slow uh, from the number two, or from, from the number one, sorry. And then, obviously, of course, explosion after that. So I would say that the three, one, two is the more advanced and slightly stronger method. However, the one, three, two is probably going to be your best bet, because you're going to be able to hit that, that number three much easier if they're slowed by 40%. And, um... Yeah, that's pretty much it. When they're in your alt, or uh, they c you can pretty much hit them with whatever you want because they can barely move. So it's pretty awesome, in a way. Um, like I said, for you, not so much for them. And that's how Posh, uh, newest god, very strong. Uh, probably gonna get nerfed. I I'd say you're gonna see a nerf in the per percentage of the uh, stacking slow for this alt. That's my prediction. And, uh, so. so anyhow, good stuff. Um, I don't build life steal on him, as you can see, which is part of the reason, you know, I go uh, Warlock Sash. Need that extra HP, especially with no life steal. Um, you know, it's it's not really a glass cannon, but it's not really a super safe build either. It's kind of, it's it, I think it strikes a pretty good balance. Um, but that high mana gives you gives you the ability to to just basically just absolutely sustain yourself 100%. 3% um, of 3,190 mana is almost uh, the full cost of that ability. It costs 110 at max level and you're getting, you know, 103 mana back or 102, whatever. Um, so yeah, it, it almost costs you nothing and you get, you know, 6% 6, 6 heal per stack of that plus the lower cooldown reduction. You can just do this while you're running away from somebody. And uh, completely hear yourself up, and it'd be like, and then pop your alt and turn around, and just waste them, and they'll be like, "What the hell is it? Like nothing." So, a lot of fun. Uh, that's it. Questions, comments, leave them below. And as always, much appreciate a subscribe. Thanks again.